Getting real estate photography clients is a lot different than getting clients for other genres of photography. And when it's not done correctly, it leads a lot of photographers to think that all realtors are cheap and they don't care about quality, but that's not true. And instead, if you change just one simple thing in your marketing approach, you can get steady work from good paying clients. After shooting literally thousands of properties, working with hundreds of realtors over the years, and also training and working with a lot of other photographers, I've seen what works, I've seen what doesn't. More often than not, there's one big mistake that new real estate photographers make, leading to this misperception that realtors are cheap and they just don't care about quality and not getting steady work, and that's that they don't quite understand that the marketing approach that they're using for other genres of photography won't work at all for real estate because they don't understand their clients. If you were doing weddings and you were doing portraits, this is one-off type work. So you would send out email blasts, you would put out ads, you would do things to attract those one-time clients. But real estate's a lot different, and it's not just because of the repeat business that you wanna get out of it, it's because of who enters the real estate agent market and their longevity, what they make. So we need to take a look at who this audience is first and then how best to approach them. Looking at data from the U.S. National Association of Realtors in 2020, we can learn a lot about realtors and why we need to market toward them a certain way. The most shocking statistic is that about 60% of realtors working two years or less were making less than $10,000 per year. That's obviously not a sustainable income, making a realtor's early years very difficult. Many of those realtors, in fact, will just quit before even reaching that two-year mark because it is so difficult, or they might even quit shortly after. If we swing to the other side of the pendulum, there's only about 4% of realtors that made more than $100,000 at that two-year point in that career, a very, very small amount. And when you take a look at all the realtors, no matter the years of experience, one third of all realtors made less than $25,000 a year in 2022. The median career length for all realtors was just eight years, which is nothing compared to most careers the last decades. And only about one third of all realtors made it to 16 years or more. In other words, there's more realtors who try and fail compared to those who can make real estate a long lasting career. The inexperienced realtors, making up the majority of realtors in the market, make next to nothing. So they'll usually be the cheap ones, which ironically will make their career even shorter and less profitable by a self-fulfilling prophecy. By not paying for those high-end professional photos, it's a principle that lies at the core of something that you should work toward changing to improve your marketing. Successful realtors know that it's more than just selling a house that the photos provide a service for. It's not just about, hey, I need to get photos, I need to get this house out there, I need to make money because I'm making less than 10 grand a year. It's more than that. It's an investment in themselves because smart agents, the successful agents, know that they wanna represent sellers. So instead of selling uh, houses to just buyers and representing buyers, which wastes a lot of time. Realtors love to represent sellers. That's where you get hired. If a uh, realtor's just representing buyers, they're driving around dozens of people to dozens of homes every weekend, writing dozens of offers that just basically almost go nowhere. But by representing a seller, it's a slam dunk. They know that they're gonna get a commission because eventually they're gonna get a sale. They know who's gonna do it. But selling to a seller is difficult because there's a lot of realtors vying to list that house. So a smart realtor, a successful realtor knows that they need to up their game. They need to be able to show those potential sellers that they will use professional techniques to sell their property, making it worth the money, those commissions that that seller is going to pay out. A big part of that and the first line of defense to sell any home, it's the photos.
And if somebody shows up with just, oh yeah, well I take these cell phone shots or something else that looks rather crude and cheap, well that's not going to compare to the other realtors who they will interview to sell their house that will show more professional assets. So it's very important that realtors invest in themselves by paying for this professional photography and smart realtors know it. But this is also something that you can use to your advantage as we work into now approaching these realtors that you want out of that majority that know what they're after and know that they want to represent sellers and therefore they won't be cheap in doing it. So as you can guess, mass mailings aren't going to do it. If you send out a, a bunch of spam, uh, just to grab an email list, you blast out a bunch of, to, to all the realtors in the area, you put ads out there, well, the only people that you're going to track, probably over 90%, it's going to be the realtors in that low category, that low income category, where there's so many more of them than anything else. And those are the ones most likely to respond to your emails because they aren't established yet, which means they also don't have any established clients. They don't have any established vendors yet. And since they don't have any vendors yet, well, they're really being cost effective. They're very price conscious of what they can afford, not realizing that they should be investing in really good photography. I've worked with some young realtors who knew that and they're successful today because of it. But the majority of these realtors who aren't gonna make it past two years, well, they're just doing a self-fulfilling prophecy by not paying for those services. You are attracting those people if all you're doing is sending out email blasts. You're just going to get one-off work from people that are going to be temporarily in this market. While that might work for weddings and portraits, that's not what you want when it comes to real estate photography. You want repeat business. You want good established clients. So how do you find them? You need to do your homework. You need to actually find the clients yourself and not have them find you from some spam or some other type of mass blasting that you're going to do. You need to specifically find the realtors who are in that category of successful realtors that you want to work with. But there's a problem. There's a chicken and egg paradox here and that those realtors probably already have a photographer. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't let that stop you. Don't be discouraged because realtors are constantly looking for new vendors all the time for a variety of reasons. Vendors, especially photographers, sometimes they don't last long because they might retire, they get burned out because sometimes there is just so much work running around all these various houses and they're not maybe charging enough so they to their clients and because of that then their service drops off. But if you can prove that you can do better, if you can provide really high quality work, better than the photographer that they have, and also provide better service, then there's a chance that they will not only try you out, but after doing so, they, may start, they might start using you more. Another thing to consider is that a lot of realtors want backup vendors. Sometimes a vendor, like a photographer, isn't available. The, it's the busy season, you're completely booked. It happens to all of us who stay really busy and you're gonna be losing some gigs. So one of the tips I do, by the way, is if I'm down to about just two openings in a week, I don't take on any new clients. I keep those open for my existing clients and my existing clients, no matter what, I will always fit them in, even if I have to work over the weekend and take on more shoots than normal and edit into the night. That's things, those are things about retention that you do. But the fact is, is that other photographers will fall off. So don't be afraid to contact realtors just because they have a photographer now, but make sure that you can do the job better. And the best way to attract those particular clients, the ones that you've done your homework for and you've sought out, is to just send them a very short email. No examples, maybe a link to your website, that's it. But they don't have time to be reading a lot and they're gonna see if it's spam. So don't make it spammy. You want this to be personalized to them. A great way to do that is like the I talk about in my book, Business Techniques for Real Estate Photography. By the way, I have a link to that down in the description for this video. One of the things I talk about in there is the local lure, and that's finding real estate agents who are selling in your neighborhood. Now, I'm not talking about trying to research someone who's 10 miles away. I'm talking about walking distance. There's probably someone very close by. Because of that, you can always offer to them that you would give them a very deep discount for the first shoot in your neighborhood 
if they hire you to try you out. Now, you can easily find out who they are by walking around the neighborhood, go on then realtor.com or Zillow, uh, any other type of agent lookup that's available out there on these uh, listing sites and see how many homes that particular agent has sold in the last year. If they don't have, they have zero or they have one or two, move on. This is going to be a new realtor. It probably won't be worth your time. Now, if that realtor were to reach out to you, that's different. But you to reach out to them, well, now you're putting yourself into pushing toward the wrong audience. Have them come to you if that ever happens. But when you seek out your local lure, make sure that they're an established realtor and offer them that one-time discount. All you need is one realtor, maybe two. But that's all you need to start out and do a fantastic job for them, top to bottom. I'm talking about great customer support, great turnaround, excellent quality in what you do. And don't worry about the price so much because if they're battling over a price to the bottom, just a race to the bottom, then it's not the type of client you want, just move on. But if you can prove that you're doing a really good job, every time you shoot a property for that agent, when it gets listed out on the MLS and gets distributed around Zello, Redfin, all those sites, every realtor in your area is gonna see your work. It's free marketing. And when they see your work, if it stands out, they're gonna contact that listing agent because they'll eventually talk to them about a showing or whatnot. And they'll say, well, who was your photographer? Boom, you got a referral. So that's why if you know who you're targeting and realize that, yes, you want the successful agents, it will stem from there. It will branch out into other opportunities where other realtors will know that you are an excellent photographer. I've been doing real estate photography a long time, and I can tell you for many years, except for the first year, many years now, my marketing budget is zero. Zilch nada. Besides paying for a website, I don't pay for ads, I don't make cold calls, I don't buy uh, email blasts, I don't do any of that. Why? Because when I started out, I took this approach. I knew that if I found a couple good realtors, that would get me started. Word would spread. There's certain businesses that are best marketed by word of mouth, and real estate photography is one of those. You can't rely on word of mouth to sustain, sustain yourself as a wedding or portrait photographer. Sure, some referrals, you'll get onesie twosie stuff there, but you can't make a steady income from that. Real estate photography is different though, and that's a whole different animal. And as you can see though, it's just populated so heavily by people trying and failing than it is the ones that are successful that you should really be targeting. So know who you're targeting, be very personal. When you do approach them with a very short email, do the best job you can and you will have opportunities that will open new doors to a more successful career in real estate photography.